Wow, that is a lot of damage indeed. Oh my god, that is beautiful! Hello everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In this video, we are going to craft the most incredible and broken hand-to-hand -hand build that will make you become an unstoppable Kung Fu Master. The Dry Leaf Arts is one of the new DLC weapons we can obtain very early without having to face any boss fight or a strong enemy. Even though it is an extremely fast weapon, only a solid strength build will allow it to display its true potential. I know it might look a little complicated to use, but it's actually very easy and deals a huge amount of damage no matter the toughness of your your target. I can guarantee you guys that with this amazing build you will be able to destroy the most powerful bosses of the land of shadows. First of all, I'm going to talk about the main features of this weapon, I will explain the details of the build, then we will test it against late game bosses and I will show you where and how you can obtain this weapon without having to fight any boss. But I am aware that some of you guys want to see the performance of this weapon in actual DLC boss fights. That's why at the very end of this video I'm going to test this build against one DLC boss that you probably struggled a lot to defeat. With that being said, let's craft the most powerful powerful kung fu build. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. Ok guys, what we have here today is a new weapon type that features an actual melee combat, which means that we are going to be fighting with our hands and feet. Obviously, my favorite part of this weapon is the moveset, it's one of the most beautiful combos that I've seen in this game. It actually feels like you are playing with a mod but a lot cleaner. The easiest way to play with this weapon is with light attacks, cause it will allow you to get a better timing and you will not get hit most of the times. However, I find the heavy attacks more effective and more stylish. And I really love the combos you can create when combining two attacks. For example, here we are going to jump attack and then a light attack and we continue with the kicks. Basically, this is a complete moveset, a fantastic and powerful moveset that will allow you to fight as a real kung fu warrior. And for the very first time, the skill of a weapon is not my favorite feature of it. The Palm Blast is basically a hit with the palm of your hand and it is the most powerful attack of this weapon. However, in order to make it effective you have to charge it and there is where the problem begins, cause it takes a while to charge and that might leave you vulnerable in a lot of fights. That doesn't mean it is not useful but it is something that you have to consider when using this skill. A very cool part of this weapon is that you can apply it any other Ash of War as long as it is compatible with this weapon type. But you can buff the weapon, this is very interesting because it is a weapon that you can infuse with other ashes of war but you cannot buff it with greases or with any incantation. And those are basically the most important features of this weapon. It is actually so simple but I really love it, the moveset is one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen in this game. And now that we know the main features of this weapon, let's jump quickly to the equipment and the stats. We are going to be using the dry leaf arts on plus 25 with the palm blast ash of war on the heavy affinity and we need any steel we have available to cast our main buffs. As I said at the start of the video, despite of being a fast weapon, it will scale a lot better with the strength on the heavy affinity. You know that you can use any armor set you like, but if you want some cool drips, I am wearing the Ronin's armor with the white reeds, gauntlets and griefs, and I am wearing the Dane's hat, which is the only part of that guy's armor set you can obtain early. The best talismans you can use for this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Godfrey Icon, and the Axe Talisman. Nevertheless, if you are not planning to use the skill as much as I do, then the Dragon Crest Grey Shield Talisman is a better option for you, as well as the Old Lord's Talisman to increase the duration of your buffs or the Rodent Windsor Insignia if you are going to attack as fast as possible. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Spike Crack Tear and the Stone Barb Crack Tear. The Spike Crack Tear will stack with the Axe Talisman, dealing a lot of damage with heavy attacks, and the Stone Barb Crack Tear will benefit those heavy attacks with a lot of more stance damage. So what we have here is basically a broken combo. With this weapon, we are going to be dealing only physical damage, that's why the best body buff is going to be Blood Boil Aromatic, but if you don't like crafting, feel free to use Flame Grandin Strength. There is a difference between between these two buffs but it is not actually that important. And don't forget your pickle turtle legs, this weapon doesn't consume a lot of stamina but it is always good to boost your stamina recovery speed. In order to obtain the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build, we need 50 on vigor, 25 on mind, endurance on 50 to be able to attack as much as possible, strength on 99 cause this is mostly a strength build, we are not going to deal any other type of damage but physical and the weapon scales mostly with strength so 99 on strength and 25 on fade. Golden Vow and Flame grant me strength are going to be our main buffs. And as you can see I have my Skadu Tree Blessing on level 7 but I strongly recommend you to have it a lot higher and if it's possible at max level. Now that we have completed and optimized our build, what do you say if we kick some demigod bots? <coughs> ok guys, to buff your character with this build you have to use Golden Buff first, then a uh, Pickle Turtle Link if you want, completely optional, 
And now you have to use your body buff. In this case, I will use Blood Boil Aromatic. Two hand your weapon, refill your FP, use your Flask of Wondrous Physic, and now you're ready to go. It's a little bit different, but it, it works better this way. Is it going to be easy, guys? Is it going to be easy? I guess it will. Boom. Oh my god. Those are some crazy attacks, to be honest. Oh my god, this is beautiful, guys. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Come on. Wow, baby! <laughs> no way! This round was beautiful! <laughs> what up, man? Wow, that is a lot of damage indeed. Oh my god, that is beautiful! Let's go, Elden Beast! Got this. <laughs> no way, baby. He's coming, guys. Come on. Let's go. Boom. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh my god! <laughs> well guys, now I will show you how you can obtain this weapon without having to fight any boss as soon as you start this DLC. From the castle front side of Grace, you will have to go all the way down here. Don't worry, uh, even if you see this, you will be able to, to go through this below, of course. And you will find some poisonous swamps here and you will have to follow this route. And here you will have to keep climbing, it is not really hard to do. And here it will be a spirit spring, those things that allow you to go uh, up of a higher place without dying. But you have to activate it around here. I don't remember exactly where it was, but it is around here. It's a, like a shiny stone. You have to hit it and you will be able to use the spirit spring. That spirit spring will allow you to fall all the way over here. If you want, you can land on the castle and trigger the side of race, but we don't need it to obtain the weapon, so it's up to you. Well, guys, assuming that you fall outside the castle, then you have to surround it until you find this side of grace. And you will just have to follow the main road until you find this side of grace. It is important for you to activate it because we are going to go back here later. Now, from this side of grace, you have to incorporate yourself in this road and go back to this other side of grace. In this side of grace, you will see some items in the ground. You have to pick them in order to be able to obtain this weapon. Now you have to go back to this side of grace. Here you will find an NPC that will drop you the dry leaf arts, but you have to defeat him first. And more or less here where the blue mark is located, you will find the NPC I'm talking about. And in order to fight him, we will have to use the gesture that we previously obtained in the ground. Once we have done it, we will be able to face him. And once we defeat him, we will obtain the dry leaf arts. <laughs> 